Hello and welcome to Chronicles with Chronic Writer. This is a series in which I'll be talking with various eminent experts from various fields. Uh, in today's episode, uh, I have uh, my own father. I'm going to talk with him about rocket science. Yes, uh, he was working with ISRO for over 35 years before he retired as the chief uh, general manager of uh, test facilities and rocket assembly from LPSC Mahendra Guri. So without further ado, I'll just jump directly into the topic. Uh, certain questions will be focused on areas which are not much discussed in public. So uh, to start with, Appa, let us uh, know more about you. Tell us about why you joined ISRO 45 years ago and why you worked there for 35 years. Yeah, I was a 1960 high schooler. During the 1960s, there was a space cold war between USA and USSR and I was closely watching both the countries how they are doing. In those days we have the broadcast through Voice of America. I used to hear the running commentaries of space flights and also I used to read magazines like Life and Times of America to gather more information about the space race, what they are doing it in those days. So that made me uh, interest in space area. I had my education as electronics from PAG Tech and also I did my M Tech from Applied Electronics and PAG Tech. So that made me to try for a, a space area either in HAL, NAL or ISRO. I got a placing in ISRO in 1977. So, uh, so you said that you joined ISRO in the year 1977. How was uh, the space research back then compared to how it is right now? In 1977, it was a starting phase for ISRO, Indian Space Research Organization. And during that time, we had only sounding rockets, which are capable of uh, taking a payload up to an 80 kilometer orbit, and it was used for atmospheric experiments only. We were not having rockets capable of launching into space to put satellite, and that was under development stage at that time. And that particular program was called SLV, Satellite Launch Vehicle, a vehicle capable of carrying a satellite to 400 kilometers, that is lower Earth orbit, and putting the satellite, a satellite weight of 40 kgs in that orbit. So you, meant, you said that uh, they were called as sounding rockets to start with. What are sounding rockets? Sounding rockets are used for weather studies. Maybe they are used for monitoring the atmospheric uh, temperature, wind velocities, magnetic parameters in that area, so that the, they will be used for the future launches for correction factors. Okay, then, uh, uh, do you remember your first launch that happened in 1979? Uh, tell, tell us about uh, the first launch experience. Uh, at that time, actually I was not directly involved in a satellite launch vehicle SLV project, but I was working in Vikram Sarabhai Space Center, which was the agency responsible for developing the SLV. And it was, the first launch was in 79 and it was a failure. And second launch was in 1980, it was a success. When the failure came in 1979, almost all the people lost these people will not be able to do anything further and uh, there was a lot of criticism from both in the Trivandrum public and also in the Indian press. So you said that uh, the, the launch, the rocket launch in 1979 was a failure and 80 was a success. Can you just give us a brief on why 79 was a failure and why 80 was a success? Uh, we were trying to learn about rocketry development uh, in 79 and we were in a very initial stages. So there were some uh, errors in the assembly and that led to the 1979 failure and uh, ISRO has got a strong review mechanism by which the failures were analyzed threadbare and 1980 when he went for the second la launch of SLV it was a grand success and that was the first success for an Indian space program. What was Abdul Kalam's role in this whole equation? He was the project director for SLV right from the beginning. Uh, who was responsible for finalizing the rocket configuration, who is responsible for developing the rocket configuration, fabricating it, assembling it, taking it to the launch pad at Srigiri Gauta and launching it and putting the satellite in the orbit. Now I just wanted to understand about these terminologies. For example, you said that first you were in Vikram Sarabhai Space Center, VSSC. 
So you also talked about launching pad that uh, is right uh, there in Sri Hari Gota. So for people who do not know about uh, the different uh, places in uh, ISRO like VSSC, LPSC and Sri Hari Gota, can you just take us through these places and what they do when it comes to uh, uh, rockets? The development of rocketry mostly is in Trivandrum and the Vikram Sarabhai Space Center was given the major responsibility for that. And its sister uh, center, a liquid propulsion system system center, is also located in Trivandrum. is responsible for developing the liquid stages for these rockets. And as a whole, the rocketry was uh, the uh, development of the total rocketry was in the responsibility of Vikram Sarabhai Space Center. Sri Gauri Gauta is a u launch pad meant for launching rockets, which are going to put satellite into the orbit. And there are two launch pads in Sri Gauta, launch pad 1 and launch pad 2 to have a redundancy and also have uh, the, uh, to have more launches per year. And we have a Bangalore Centre car, uh, URAV Space Centre, yeah, initially it was called ISAC, Indian Space Satellite Centre, where the satellites are developed, fabricated and developed. And we have the Ahmedabad Space Application Centre SAC, where space application technologies were developed. And we have centres in uh, East Track, Bangalore, which is used for tracking. NR, NR is a national remote sensing for this analysis and also we have a lot of tracking centers throughout India down south also. We talked about liquid stages to start with. Uh, what do you mean by liquid stages? See, rockets to propel needs a lot of energy. Uh, SLV, if you look at it, it is a three stage, fully a solid uh, rocket. One, two, three, all the three stages are solids. And using a solid stage, efficiency of the solid stage rockets are much lower so using that rocket lifting heavy payloads is not uh, a it correct is option mm. so liquid stages have a higher efficiency and liquid stages are in two varieties one is earth storable liquid stages where the propellants can be stored in earth store earth to temperature other one is the cryogenic stages cryogenic Everything the propellants are stored in cryogenic temperature. Take us through uh, key moments from your time in ISR because, anyways, you started with 77, 79, and 80. But I just want you to take us through the key moments uh, of your time with ISR. Uh, when ISRO was formed, our forefathers, Vikram Sar, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, had a vision the space technology, what we do in India, should be useful to the common man. We did not enter the space program to become a super power, but we entered the space program to have all the benefits of the space program for common man. That was the major goal that our forefathers gave. So the SLV was started with a thing, SLV can launch a 40 kg satellite in a 400 kilometer orbit. That was only an experimental satellite. To be very frank, it is not going for much use usefulness. Then we went ahead with the next uh, vehicle called ASLV, augmented SLV, which can carry 150 kg satellite into the orbit. But again, that vehicle is also a total solid vehicle. These are all in between steps for the major rocketry we, uh, ISRO was planning to develop. The major rocketry ISRO was planning to develop was one called PSLV, Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, other called GSLV, Geosynchronous Satellite Vehicle. Polar satellite vehicle is used for remote sensing, mainly remote sensing because it will be orbiting across the polar and the satellite will be at a lower earth orbit and it will be used for mostly remote sensing applications and uh, the other satellite uh, vehicle is called GSLV. This is to launch satellites for communication purpose. The satellite will be positioned at 36,000 kilometers where it will rotate it will also rotate at the same speed of the earth so that the satellite will be synchronous or stationary with respect to the point where it is looking at uh, we have two artifacts in front of you one is i think uh, two rockets which are miniature versions of gslv uh, i can see one is mark three. two mark three right mark two and mark three mark two and mark three so these are at one is to 200 ratio that's what is written here so can you just explain with the different parts of what this is all about for those uh, who do not know anything about 
this particular piece? Uh, we started the GSLE Mark II program somewhere around 1970s and it needed some liquid stages to be developed. One of the, the rocket was configured as a four stage vehicle. First stage was a solid booster and uh, followed by... Can you show it in that particular rocket for because I... Uh, what you see in the inside is a solid booster. Okay. Around that there are four L40 liquid stages. They are also booster but they are liquid to lift the rocket from the launch pad above into the sp space. So the strap-ons are basically liquid strap-ons. This is called L40 strap-ons. The second stage is a liquid which is located in the middle of the rocket and the third stage is a cryogenic vehicle. So okay. it's a three-stage vehicle with four strap-ons. So what is this particular thing like with two strap-ons? Uh, I think this is called our big brother. This uh, Mark II can carry around two to two and a half ton satellite into a Geosangana's orbit that is 36,000 kilometers. But this uh, the Mark III can carry around three and a half to four ton satellite into the same Geosangana's orbit, almost double. And this is made of again three stages. And first is a two strap-ons. These two strap-ons are solid strap-ons. The center is a liquid stage of twin en two engines together. And this is called, we call it as a L110 liquid engine, liquid stage. The third one is a C25 cryogenic stage. And this rocket is now used for launching satellites around three to four ton into Geosangana's orbit. Wonderful, boss. So let, let me get into a totally different uh, topic altogether because we're talking about ISRO rockets which we send indigenously. But I remember uh, in the 90s, early 90s, I guess, you, you went to Russia. So what is this whole concept about Indian scientists heading to Russia? What is the whole backdrop behind the whole thing? Uh, 